Dr. Josephine Dugopolskiga is an internal medicine and pediatric physician. Currently, she is an associate professor at Loyola Strait School of Medicine and is responsible for student and resident education. She takes care of a large Polish-speaking population and was also elected to the board of directors of the Polish American Medical Society. Please help me in welcoming Dr. Dugopolski. Thank you for that lovely introduction. Dzień dobry. So as a typical teacher, I like to be organized and I have note cards, so don't mind my note cards. Uh, so I stay on a task, right? Uh, so in order to understand where I am today, you have to understand where I came from. So I was born in Zakopane. I lived in a small town, Hohov. Yes, Guralka. Uh, can you push out the first picture? Our house was built in 1914. It's a typical log, uh, wood house. It's almost like a log cabin. And here's a picture of my mom on the left on the bottom, my grandma, uh, grandpa. And it was a great time, but I grew up in communist Poland. And you had to uh, wait in line for everything. There was a separate line for bread, separate line for meat. You had uh, stickers that you got, you could only have so much per month. Everything was rationed. Uh, we had the first car in the village, the first phone. So anybody that had to make a phone call would come to our house, uh, maybe once a month, because it was so expensive. Um, and so life was a little different. We lived in one room. Can you show the second picture? Everybody lived in one room, the top right, uh, because you had to heat the whole house, only one room. We had no central air, central heating, right? And if you wanted to make dinner, you had to make a fire. Um, and, but life was good. You did laundry by hand. You could see the little bowls behind me. That's me as a little girl. Um, that's how you did laundry. So no changing three times a day, uh, like my kids love to do, right? Next slide. But life was super, super happy. I would, I had everything. I had my family. Uh, we had animals, we had cats, dogs, horses, uh, natural food and we got to make bonfires. Uh, 30 minutes of Dobranocka was about the extent of my TV, right? My whole world was basically Poland. That's all I knew. I didn't know anything different until my dad came to America, and as far as I knew, there was just Poland and America and the world. Um, so that was my little world. And then coming to America, can you imagine if you had to get permission to go to Michigan or Wisconsin, and you had to wait three years in order to go there. Um, my dad came to America when I was two years old. They didn't let families go together. Um, then my mom and I finally got a visa to come here three years later, I was five and a half. And it actually was on Friday the 13th that we were approved for our visa, so that's a special day for me. Um, I came to America when I was five and a half in the middle of kindergarten. I didn't speak English. Um, and so I didn't know what anybody was saying to me. Um, but within six months, I was translating for everybody. Next picture, this is me, my first picture with my dad uh, when I came here. Next picture. And this is your translator. So you want a job, you're gonna have a six or seven year old filling out your job application. I hope those people got, that's about my daughter's age, she's a little older, so if you guys need a college application help, she's gonna help you. <laughs> so. Uh, but that's what I had to do. Uh, but I didn't realize that that experience, I was getting free education. I was getting a free internship. My mom took me to banks. My mom took me to the job site. I was going everywhere, doctor's offices. I had no idea what I was saying half the time, but I had to learn those words and those skills. Um, and then I came to realize that, wow, there's not a lot of Polish-speaking physicians, and here's a little girl translating for an older person having to go to the doctor's office. We're done with the slides. <laughs> um, so my Saturdays looked like this, right? I had gone to public school, so first I went to uh, CCD, religion school at St. Albert. Then we had to go to another school. I went to Five Holy Martyrs for Polish school at first, then St. Tribus, 
Um, then my kids went to St. Blaise and St. Albert, uh, so we've been all, all over. My, meanwhile, all my friends were playing video games and uh, watching cartoons. So my kids also go to Polish school. They also loved it as much as I did at the time, not realizing how important it was going to be. Um, then I helped out with the family business. So my mom, um, she worked as a janitor downtown, a uh, typical Polish mom, right? But we had health insurance because of it. Um, my dad first worked road construction. He worked in a factory. He did woodworking. And finally, he put it all together and started building homes. Uh, but in order to do that business, they needed me to help translate for them. Um, and they were a little freaked out when I to, went away to college and I wasn't going to translate. But then my mom got to flourish and kind of used all of her skills too. I had a lot of barriers along the way. Uh, no one in my family attended college, let alone med school. So I didn't have any mentors. Um, I didn't have anybody to look up to. But my mom got uh, Dr. Fred Lea. She got in contact with him, and he was one of my first mentors. And I really appreciate him because he took the time. He always had time to talk to me and to tell me, um, you can do this. You can keep going. Um, and in fact, my college, uh, sorry, my high school counselor, uh, he actually discouraged me to going into medicine. He said, you're never going to make it because nobody in your family uh, did that, and I was like, but I have a 4.25 GPA out of 4, um, I, but I think he actually motivated me more uh, to do that. But not many people know, I started at Loyola for six months, School of Nursing, um, because I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to make it in medicine, uh, but after six months, and there's nothing wrong, we need nurses, we need everyone, but I was like, this is not, this is not my journey, and so I switched. It was scary because I was afraid of failure, afraid of imposter syndrome, if any of you know that. Uh, uh, I was like, they're going to figure out that I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and so that was definitely a big barrier. And then another thing, motherhood versus career. I always knew I wanted to be a mom. Am I going to be a good mom if I'm a doctor? Am I going to be a good doctor if I'm a mom? And the other thing is, will I be able to advance in my career if I'm a busy mom? So all those things came into play. But actually, yes, you can totally do it. Uh, you have to have the support of your family, community, and carpools are a lifesaver. So my career. So my first job out of residency was uh, Loyola University. So at first, my goal was just to be a busy doctor. Um, and so I had a lot of Polish patients. I volunteered in the community a lot. Uh, my Highlander crew knew who I was too, so they came to see me. Um, and then after that, I wanted, I wanted more. I worked at a university, um, so I taught medical students, residents. Uh, I volunteered in uh, committees, clubs. Uh, kind of started just uh, knowing all the different things about the university. Um, and then this past April, um, I was uh, appointed the Regional Medical Director of Primary Care. So that means all the primary care doctors, immediate care doctors, um, and actually all the McNeil doctors report to me. So I'm the first female uh, Polish woman that um, has that kind of rank at Loyola. So I'm proud of that. And we also have a medical Polish course. Uh, there weren't any Polish medical students at Loyola when I started. Now, not only do we have Polish medical students, we teach Americans how to speak Polish. Uh, it's the only medical Polish course um, in the United States uh, at a medical school. So they have to learn Polish too. And believe it or not, we celebrate Vigilia, and then we have a medical Polish uh, panel discussion where we get all the Polish-speaking physicians um, to kind of talk about what it's like to take care of Polish patients with all their herbal remedies and, and everything else. So um, it's pretty fun, and it's well attended. So being Polish has taught me a lot of things. Obviously, two languages, hard work, survival, jeszcze Polska nie zginęła, right? Uh, persistence, how to be a jack of all trades. Um, I can take care of somebody's health, but I could also uh, use a hammer 
and, uh, and power tools. Networking, it's so important. You never know who you meet, uh, whether it's at the bank, whether it's here. Uh, so it's important to network. That will definitely get you farther in your career. Can't is not in the vocabulary. Negotiating skills. Uh, my mom used to tell me I'd make a great lawyer because I always argue with her. Sense of community across several generations. I love when I see Polish um, youth interact with their parents, grandparents. I think that's unique to us. I don't think uh, Americans do it as much. I think it's fun to go to a Polish wedding where a uh, grandson is dancing with his grandma, etc. I think we definitely have a sense of community. And it's also taught me to be humble. Now, being Polish got me through COVID. I was at the command center, um, so we had eight teams, uh, and we had to sit in a boardroom for 14 hours a day, uh, every eight days. And there was a physician, there was somebody from maintenance, somebody from supply chain, and we had to figure out what to do with COVID, anything that related to COVID had to come through us. So people would come in with uh, masks that they got on Amazon and we had to clear them. We had to make protocols. Um, and at that time we had to make protocols with a date and a time on it, because what was true in the morning was not true that night. Um, and so my carpenter skills helped me out. We had to scope out the hospital looking for new ICU beds um, because we were taking over more and more. Um, so it definitely um, helped me with all my background. And then just to be a calming voice. When everybody's freaking out around you, um, how do you get everybody to calm down, take a deep breath, um, and be a leader and make sure it's moving forward? And so what's the secret to my success? I think one is strong family values. Religion is very important to me. Strong work ethic. Um, it's not going to happen from your bed or from your couch. You definitely have to work hard. Um, people who told me you can do it, but also people who told me you can't. Um, failures, that's also taught me a lot. My last year of training, uh, when I was seven months pregnant with my first son, I was running the ER um, at the VA hospital. Um, and I was still in training, but my attending who came in to supervise me he said, I'm going to bed, wake me up if anybody dies. So I had to run the whole ER by myself. And there was a guy with pneumonia, there was another guy with some leg pain, and then a guy who came in with heartburn. Um, and when I was taking his history, he drank like three pots of coffee a day, popped ibuprofen like it was candy. It was like, well, yeah, sir, I can see why you have some heartburn. I gave him a GI cocktail, which that's what it's called. His heartburn went away patted myself on the back, and he went home. Uh, the next day, the cardiologist called me, screaming at me, because the guy was actually having a heart attack, and I missed it. But fast forward 10 years, I'm seeing a Polish lady who's not my patient. She just comes in. Uh, she's like, Pani doktor, boli mnie brzuch. Zjadłam czekoladka. So she had some stomach pain. But I know she had breast cancer, radiation to the left side of her breast, which your heart's right under there, which predisposes you to heart disease. So I did an EKG, but unfortunately it wasn't helpful because there was some electrical abnormality. Um, but I was like, I think you need to go to the hospital because I think you're having a heart attack. She was not happy with me. She was like, Pani doctor, I came here with stomach pain and you're telling me I'm having a heart attack. I was like, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but if I'm right, I'll never forgive myself if you go home. Well, she got a stent, they opened up her, uh, the blockage, and I called her the next day. I was like, you still mad at me? Um, and she sends me flowers every year on the anniversary of a heart attack. But I couldn't have done it without mentors. Like I said, Dr. Fred Leo was one of my first mentors, uh, but also Dr. Marek Rudnitsky, uh, we did a lot of breast cancer volunteer work in the Amber Coalition for at least 25 years. 
He was always um, making sure to take young people under his wing and uh, helping them with their success, getting them out there, not taking the credit for it, but really kind of trying to get the next generation going. Uh, Dr. Krull was also another. She was one of my first female mentors. Because like I said, there weren't a lot of women in leadership in medicine, um, but we're seeing more and more. So I'm very happy about that. Uh, so mentors are important. So go and look for people who do what you want to do and talk to them. And people ask me what I'm most proud of. I'm actually the most proud of my parents because they had the courage to leave, not knowing what they were coming to. They didn't have the language. They didn't have the finances here. They didn't really know what they were coming to. They didn't have an education. It's not like they were coming to a job. They just had to figure it out. So imagine if I sent you next week to a foreign country, you don't know the language, I'll give you 500 bucks for your first week and then you gotta figure it out. Um, so all of you in this room have family, community, language, and education. So you guys can all do it. And I'm counting on you, uh, each and every one of you. Good luck. So much. Dziękujemy bardzo. Thank you so much, Dr. Josephine Długopolski Ga. Było naprawdę bardzo miło być z młodzieżą dzisiaj i cieszę się. Też chodziłam do polskiej szkoły w Chicago i to jest taki, jak nazywamy, full circle, nie? Że mogę tak przedstawienie zrobić ze studentami i myślę, że coraz więcej idziemy do przodu jako Polacy, coraz więcej ważnych miejsc, stanowiskach mamy, czy to adwokat, czy to lekarz, czy to congressman w banku pracować i cieszę się, że byłam tutaj dzisiaj i myślę, że na drugi rok jeszcze będzie więcej ludzi i więcej wiedzy. To jest o tyle potrzebne, że dla ich przyszłości, dla ich dobrego samopoczucia, dla rozwoju ich karier i oczywiście dla całego ich przyszłego życia. To jest druga konferencja, w której uczestniczę. Rok temu była w Copernicus Center i byłam pod dużym wrażeniem zarówno całej konferencji, jak i wykładowców i życzę, żeby dzisiejsza odniosła taki sam sukces.